As over 200 rampaging wildfires continue to burn in the Northwest Territories, Defense Minister Bill Blair is promising federal funding to help in recovery efforts. Now, this comes as nearly 20,000 people have evacuated Yellowknife, where the flames got as close as 15 kilometers to the capital. Many Yellowknife evacuees packed as much as they could into suitcases, and they either flew out of the Northwest Territories or left by car on the long journey south. Our next guest and his family were one of those who had to flee their homes with as much as they could pack or carry. Well, joining us now is Sean Sinclair, a Yellowknife resident and evacuee. Sean, thanks again for your time today. Thanks a lot for having me. Now, I'm sure this uh, is a very stressful time for you, Sean. Really appreciate it. Um, so what is the overall sentiment that you felt, not only you felt, but your community felt in Yellowknife as you saw this wildfire approaching closer and closer to your city? Yeah, there's definitely a, a huge amount of building anxiety, I would say, in the city. Um, we're fairly used to wildfires. They've been going on all summer. Um, but then they suddenly sort of in, really encircled the city and started coming closer and closer. I would say everyone became very obsessed with watching, you know, the wind forecasts and checking the smoke air quality daily or every minute, perhaps. Uh, so, yeah, it really became a bit of a lot of anxiety and obsession. Uh, and then a, a lot of people near the end really started to to plan to evacuate because it started to feel like that was becoming the reality as as sort of those fires came closer from each side. And I know that uh, you and your family evacuated even before the official evacuation order. And there's only one road out of uh, Yellowknife. So tell us a little bit more about this drive. What was it like to drive by <laughs> these wildfires and, and all this smoke around you? Yeah, so, I mean, it's a it's pretty much a 1,500 kilometer drive south to the, you know, sort of to get to where you're, you probably want to go. So it was a really long journey. Uh, it was definitely very daunting to leave. Sort of the advice at the time was was stay in place, sort of shelter in place. Um, but yeah, I would say that that stopped seeming reasonable for a lot of people. And, and obviously, once the evacuation order order came, everyone left. Uh, we did have to drive through probably two 50 kilometer stretches of, of active fires, which was quite quite frightening um, through sections where there's also no cell service. So there's no cell phone service, no real connection at all. So just sort of get, getting into it and hoping for the best. Um, we did, we were lucky enough to have an inReach. So we had an, an inReach actively sort of texting and updating friends and, and other people who were driving nearby or who were driving ahead and behind of us. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, it was a real blackout window driving through all those fires. Sounds like a terrifying situation, Sean. Now, uh, where are you right now? Do you and your family have a safe place to stay right now? Yeah, we do. So we have my wife's family lives in northern Alberta. So we're, we're currently in Rochester, Alberta, near Athabasca. So a, a really small town. That's where we've we've landed. And uh, our neighbors in Yellowknife actually joined us on the drive and are, are also staying here for now uh, while we wait and see see what happens in terms of when we can return. Well, it's good to know that you're safe, Sean. Now, what about others? Mm -hmm. Do you know if all your friends and associates in Yellowknife got out safely and have a place to stay, either through a friend or an evacuation center? They, yeah, they, all of our friends and all, all of the all colleagues and whatnot have made it out now. Um, I would say most of them drove, ended up driving and have landed with friends or family or friends of friends or friends of family and so on. Um, a few have, have ended up in the evacuation centers down in Calgary and Edmonton. And I think there, there's a few other smaller ones. Uh, but I do think everyone's been accommodated. Uh, definitely the people here have been super nice, super friendly, just opening their, their doors to everyone, uh, which, is, which has definitely helped a lot. Well, that's good to hear, Sean. Now, we know there's a lot of criticism around Meta's move to stop news links on Instagram and Facebook. Did that affect you and your family in any way in terms of getting accurate updates on this wildfire? Um, I don't know if like the, the meta one in particular, uh, really impacted us just cause we weren't, we weren't really getting our, our information from Facebook, but, uh, I would say for the people in Yellowknife, I know cabin radio, which is a local radio station. Well, ironically is not actually a radio station because, uh, the CRTC hasn't given them a license to actually be a radio station. Um, but they, they were really like the key, I would say source of information, really good at filtering through all of the all of the pieces, uh, all the pieces of the story, and providing people with current, yeah, current updates. All right, Sean. Now, uh, just a quick thirty yeah. seconds left here. But what's next uh, regarding the possibility of returning home for you and your family? Uh, well, I think right now we're just playing it, playing it by ear, day by day. We're not really sure. Uh, you know, every night at seven, there's a 
broadcast from the government and they sort of provide a bit of an update. So far, it doesn't sound like much progress. I mean, the fires are are not progressing as quickly as, as they had maybe initially thought, which is great news. Uh, but I think right now there's no no real indication on when we'll return other than weeks, potentially. All right, Sean, we really appreciate you joining us and uh, sharing your story with us. Thank you so much. Thank you.